Holy Canva. Canva has absolutely exploded recently. You've seen this, right? It started out with cool graphics and that was great, but over the years it has absolutely erupted. Website capabilities, scheduling capabilities, AI content creation, embedded apps, videos, translation, sketching, animation. Oh my. For many of the nonprofits that we work with, Canva is still the go-to for creating social media posts, communications graphics, presentations, or anything else that requires a creative flair. It is free for nonprofits, easy to learn, and extremely capable. Last year we wrote this blog on this topic and had a corresponding video that kind of popped off. We said Canva's website building feature may be a flat out game changer. Now in 2023, we can 100% officially say that Canva websites are changing the game. Earlier versions of Canva websites limited you to one long page, think like a landing page, with no menu navigations and no option for SEO. But having built a few Canva websites myself, I can confidently tell you that they have since overcome many of these limitations. That being said, there are still some cons to report, and we will get to those. But spoiler alert, there are way more pros than cons, and we can't wait to share those with you either. So let's get into it. Pro number one, both the free and the pro version allow you to build websites on Canva. The pro version will give you more templates to choose from, but you can build them with both free and pro. Pro number two, when using Canva as the hosting provider, you can develop and publish a website at completely no cost. You heard me, free website. That's just not something people say anymore. As you create this free website, there are multiple templates that you can choose from. You can use filters, slides to build pages, landing pages, call to action pages, contact forms, and look, they even organize the options based on what you might be, like a nonprofit. Pro number three, when you're creating this free Canva website, there are multiple templates that you can choose from. They even organize the templates for what you might be looking for, service, portfolio, nonprofit, whether you're using filters, slides, to build pages, landing pages, call to action pages, contact forms. You have a ton of options to choose from here. Pro number four, Canva websites are mobile ready and mobile friendly. And assuming most of your audience will be viewing your website on their phone, this is really important. But as we talk about in this particular video, make sure to check the mobile version of your site so you can fix any responsiveness issues. As I learned in that video, it can be really difficult to customize a mobile version of your site but a workaround for this is actually grouping those elements. Sometimes if you don't group the elements together, they actually wind up in different places on your mobile display. So be sure to check your mobile version. Thankfully, Canva does offer you a mobile preview, so you can check all of that before you hit publish. Pro number five, Canva is a great option when you need a creative and professional looking landing page. Maybe you want a personal page or you want a page for an event or you don't need a ton that's actually on the page. They have a ton of templates to get you started. Pro number six, websites on Canva are easily customizable with all the features that you'd expect. You can change the colors, fonts, text, sizing, add links, etc. This is actually a webinar, but our DigiSite is not built with Canva, but I have built multiple sites in Canva and I can tell you it looks exactly the same as when you're making any other graphic within Canva. It's just that the website ones have a publish button up at the top that you can actually make it a published website. Pro number seven, you can easily embed your Canva videos and Canva images onto your Canva website template. Pro number eight, newer features now allow you to simulate a multiple page website with menu bars at the top that will either scroll down to that particular particular content or the ability to link additional pages. Pro number nine, they have contact form integrations like Typeform, Google Form, and Microsoft Forms. Pro number 10, to extend its functionality, there are many apps, think plugins, that can be added into a Canva website like Google Maps, Pixabay, Emojis, all the usual apps you'd expect to embed and probably a lot more. And pro number 11, last but not least, AI for the win. The newest, hottest, trendiest features for Canva are around no surprise AI, and it is quite magical, might I add. Canva now has Magic Write, which is kind of like chat GPT. You give it a prompt, it generates text for your site that you can refine and edit for your needs similar to ChatGPT, but with the convenience of having it directly within Canva. Then you have Magic Design, which leverages AI to use your own photos or videos to create customized templates for your image, all in Canva again. And of course we have text to image, think Mid Journey. This is an app as opposed to a native element of Canva that also works from your prompts to describe the type of image that you want. As you can see, 
the pros are pretty darn impressive. But we're gonna talk about the cons because this is a pros and cons video. Con number one, the URL link for any free Canva site is going to have the word Canva in the domain name. This is kind of bad form, not really professional. We wouldn't recommend you doing this, but if you absolutely need to go this route, you can mask this with a bit.ly link, which is free to do. Your URL is still going to have the word Canva in the name, but you can mask it a bit, make it shorter. It will still have bit.ly in the name unless you decide to pay for something somewhere. Con number two, Canva free users can only publish five websites and Canva pro users can publish unlimited websites. If you have an existing domain name that you want to use for Canva Pro, you can only publish five Canva websites with your own existing domain names. Con number three, you can purchase a domain name through Canva, but it's a little pricier than it might be elsewhere, but you might be able to justify that because you don't have to pay for hosting. As someone who has built multiple Canva websites, I say it's worth it. Con number four, the buttons you place on your Canva website won't have any animation when you hover over them, so it might not be clear that it's clickable. To overcome this, I would suggest really making sure anything you want to be clickable looks like a link. If you have questions, about that ask below. Con number five, a customized mobile view is not possible. Again, that would have been really helpful for me in this whole situation here. Con number six, e-commerce sites as we know them are not natively possible in Canva, but you can always embed photos of products and the buy button and then just have it link elsewhere. I'm a fan of the linking. Con number seven brings us back to the apps. While these apps greatly extend the functionality of Canva websites, it does come at a performance price. Adding a number of these apps was found to slow down the load times of websites. This is not soul crushing. You can deal with this, but it's something to be aware of, especially because website speed is a factor in Google search rankings. So consider it as important, yeah. Con number eight, Canva claims to be SEO friendly, but with the absence of some industry standard SEO measurements like header tags, it can be kind of hard to evaluate. The most SEO friendly we've seen is the ability to add a description to your website. Cons number nine and 10 are bringing us back to our YouTube channel here, which by the way, if this video was helpful at all for you so far, please like and subscribe to our channel because this tells us we should make more and more Canva content and answer all your questions. Changing your Canva website favicon is something that should be extremely simple to do, but it is not. Look at all these people that like were struggling until I made this video and figured out how to do it myself, which it took me so long to figure out how to do it, but I finally contacted support and then I was able to help all these people because their support is wrong, or at least their Canva help article on the subject is wrong, but watch our video and that will help. And then in this other Canva website troubleshoot video, I'm talking about how mobile display is just not very friendly. It doesn't look like what I want it to look like. It doesn't look like the desktop version, unless I group elements or play with it a lot. So you might have a little bit of troubleshooting there, but it is definitely worth the extra effort to make sure your mobile version is optimized. Okay, that was a lot, but what do you think? Drop us a comment below and let us know. Are you gonna be using Canva websites? Do you already use them? 